<laughs> Black belts are skipping again tonight. Yeah. Must have killed them Monday. Must have worked them too hard. That's what I thought. I said the black belts won't be back. Yeah. After that hard workout, them whimpers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheap. Right, Kudashi. All right, 30 jumping jacks, go. It went from a big class Monday to a little class Wednesday. Must have scared everybody, Jim. They heard about you pushing me. That had to wake up your senses a little bit, right? I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. All right, push-ups, 20. Yeah, so I was thinking, why don't we have a nice, easy class to make for the hard Monday, right? Yeah, there you go. Sensei with a 30-minute lecture, we'll be good. I am classified I am classified as a lecturer at college. That's what I'm classified as. Did you give us a preview of your class? A preview? <laughs> All right, leg push is 30. I can ask a bunch of questions if you want. That's what the guy did me last time. I said, okay, everybody's dismissed. And <laughs> 20 minutes later, I'm leaving. I'm like, wow. I turn on the lights off, <laughs> put my boots on, he's still talking. I'm like, man. <laughs> I'm like, this is bad. I'm going to have to quit like 10 minutes early at least just so I can answer a question he's going to give me. And it wasn't one. It gives me like five or six. And they're different so far every time. He's got to run out soon. Ankle picks, 30. All right, left out, right in. That was pretty easy, right? Wasn't too bad? Pretty easy? Okay. <laughs> Jim's laughing. Yeah, we didn't do kayak. We didn't do the mountain climbing. What's up? I was going easy. You know, you don't have to tell them. <laughs> we should have told them that, oh my gosh, that was brutal on Wednesday. Yeah. I don't want to repeat of that. Man, we're not going back to Wednesday for a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, last Wednesday was pretty hard. Yeah, that was bad. We did bag work, yeah. We did some bag work. The gym's like, man, I haven't sweat in a while. You got to push me, man. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, like oh, we get that nice glow when we leave. It's called frostbite. <laughs> and switch. I got to remember Vinny's not here, so you don't need as much time each leg. And butterfly. Before I was watching on TV, they were showing them imploding the Trump Tower in Atlantic City. Oh, yeah? That's pretty cool. I mean, you know, they, it, it was planned demolition. Sure, sure. It's neat how they come straight down, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Just when it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I saw it in Vegas once when I was there. The dust cloud is incredible. But it's amazing how it just falls straight oh, yeah. down in that area. You would think all this stuff would just fly out there, but it doesn't. It's so all the buildings are out, like you said, there's dust to it. Yeah, but nothing flies really out of the way. Yeah, it's crazy. You're like, how do they do it? I mean, they don't let you get close, but when you walk that way, you're like, there's nothing floating around. There's no building material, nothing. It's, it's like such strategy how to make those things just fold in. They gotta know what the hell they're doing. Oh yeah, it's, it's definitely a science. Oh yeah. I mean, they gotta know how to make it just crumble inward. It's like cutting a tree down, you know, when you fell, fell a tree, you know. If you know how to do it, you can put it almost in the right spot every time. But there's always these little factors <laughs> that I, I'm watching many videos about. Well, if the tree is dead, sort of, things can happen. <laughs> or if you get a wind or this or that. I'm, I'm watching some crazy guys that are professionals cutting down thousands of trees. And the guy goes, this is going wrong. <laughs> He's like running. 
He's like, leaves the saw, he starts running. He goes, it's going wrong. That's what he says. When one of those trees starts going wrong, it ain't gonna go right. Oh no, and it's not like a little tree like this. Yeah. These trees are like, you know, monstrous. So when they drop them, man, it's like, wow. Timber. Timber, they don't even, this guy wasn't, you know, this guy was running. This guy, that's how he knows he didn't know it was, he's like, it's going the wrong direction, I could tell already. He said, just started tilting one weird way, and he says, I saw about they'll come off and they break sometimes, they jump back on the stump part of it, and they come backwards. Yeah. Like they kick out instead of falling forward, they'll kick back, and you don't know which way they're gonna kick back sometimes. Yeah. Or like they'll cut a tree down and it's hollow in the middle and they don't know it, and they, all, they never fall the same. Yeah, they do some weird things. Last year, I was pretty lucky last year. I dropped quite a few trees and legs out straight. And I was dropping them all within three feet of where I said drop them. So real nice. The problem is you get a lot of confidence like that then. So then you gotta start thinking to yourself, don't be too wise. <laughs> Take your time. We had a trunk head. Well, I mean, we had a tree taken off, but the trunk is like three feet down. It's a big one, yeah. And uh, the guy taken off the trunk, you know, they took everything out, it was like maybe 10 feet of trunk left. I asked the guy, I said, how much that weigh? You know, just the trunk. He goes, oh, probably about 6,000 pounds. It's crazy, isn't it? I'm thinking, man, that's... That's crazy. I know, it's just hard to believe it weighs that much. Yeah, yeah but you say them log trucks, they're... Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I dropped the tree, it was a 100 footer, it wasn't a real big one. 100 foot's a pretty good size. And it was either you drop it right or you land it on your house. So I drop it, cut it up, and I kept cutting bigger pieces, you know, thinking I'm gonna grab this chunk of this tree and move it. No, I had to cut them in half. I was gonna grab them about this big. No way. I had to cut it in half and I had a hard time picking it up then. I was like, I can't believe this thing weighs that much, you know? So I went from this whole idea I was gonna cut this many pieces to like double on it. You know, you think in that tree, there's a lot of moisture in there. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. People don't realize how heavy the water is. Oh. Well, a dead tree's light, if it's dead on the ground. They're relatively light. Yeah. Relatively, compared to like a live one. Until they get saturated, then it's forget it, you know. But, but it's when it's dead and it's dry, it's like it's pretty light. Any stretch you guys want to work? I think it's kind of neat though how somebody came up with the idea of cutting it at a certain angle. And having a back cut into it makes it drop where you want it to go. It's, I think it's kind of neat. They call it like an open cut, an open face cut leg, and then they come back and cut it from the back. And how, where you cut that opening, that's how that tree's gonna fall. It's kind of amazing how they came up with that. Yeah. We had a couple of ash trees near the house. Oh, big ones, bro. That got wiped out by ash borers. That's scary. And uh, now, when you see them come in, they got that arm. It just grabs the tree. And cuts it. And it's got a, it's got a saw right yep. on it with the arm and it just grabs it like that. Those are big money. I've seen one of those. Those are freaking cool. They are. They really are. It's like, wow. But I mean, and then some of them, they'll cut that like that and then a pe they'll run it and it'll go right up it and down it and strip it clean. Yep. They've got some real high tech, even more high tech than that one. I saw that once and I saw that, whoa, I saw it on a logging show. That was pretty this impressive. One, they took the tree out totally without ever climbing up, without ever going up in a basket. I know, isn't that cool? That's amazing. He said, yeah, their insurance goes down a lot <laughs> without having to get up in there. Oh, I imagine. Because when you're climbing that tree, oh, yeah. I mean, I was, I was cutting this one branch down last winter, not this winter, but the winter before, and the branch was being pushed down from the snow being so heavy into my driveway. So I climb up this tree with a chainsaw, all right? And I got the ladder, you know, to get up there, but I'm up on a branch and I got to cut this. And I'm literally sitting like halfway on, and I was like, eh, halfway on the tree, halfway on the ladder, and I'm cutting this branch, you know, and I know it's going to snap because there's weight on it. So I'm cutting it, when it popped, it hit my ladder. <laughs> and I was up pretty high. 
And I, like I said, I was half on the tree, so I mean, I hung on. My leg was wrapped around the tree good enough to hold me. And that freaked me out, though. That thing just snapped and it came down and kicked my ladder out. This was cool to watch a guy. He just had his controls like a video game. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Cutting the tree down across the street from me. You guys cutting the thing down, holding a chainsaw with one hand. You know, like, you're not. That thing, <laughs> that thing pinches. What do you got? You know, he's up there in the basket thing, he's scratching in the tree. He's cutting the thing down like this, and like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, sometimes you, know, you get. You yeah. have two hands on that thing. And Control it, yeah. And then when it, on that machine where they're doing it automatically, that chainsaw was cut like butter. Oh, yeah. I mean, that sucker had to be so sharp. Oh, I guarantee there's, it's probably one of those really like, I think I saw pictures of it, like the head on that, it's not really a chain. It's like these teeth, these huge teeth. And they're, the teeth, are, I forgot how much each tooth is on it. But it's like, it has a, it's like, it looks like a chainsaw, but it's these teeth and they're about that big. And when they get moving, they just rip it through anything. It's I mean, amazing. It was going through, I mean, it was going through branches this big. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I said they're they're huge teeth. Each one's about that big, that, and then of course pointed. Yeah, I saw it on uh, American Loggers. They had a machine like that, and they were showing how big the teeth were. And I think the guy said they were like hundred bucks a tooth. So when they break them, you know, he goes, "We do cut thousands and thousands of trees, and then all of a sudden you break one, then the next one breaks, the next one breaks." Because once you break one, it starts compromising the other ones, because yeah. the other ones got to work harder. Because it's all about how they work together. It's so nothing worse. You're out. In the, you're in the swamp, and now you got to go back with a machine that goes this slow. <laughs> yes, it goes really slow. You know, because now I'm taking like an hour to go back just to get a tooth repair. All right, have a seat. Forty-five year old guys. You guys got anything you want to work particular or? One steps. One steps, Damien. Second half. Bob. Okay, Jim. Okay. We can do that. Roll back triangle triangle. We can do that. We can do that. I know, and then I'm like, what is wrong with you? There's like four people after you got out of I talked to him for a bit, a couple seconds, and I got him to understand, dude, you know. But man, I thought he was gonna keep going. Yeah. I was like, no way. But again, his dad said he doesn't know why, he just, he'll get started, he can't stop. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, like I don't. I mean, I, you want something to cry? <laughs> Side guard side. No, he's lazy. Yeah, he's wandering around in his mind. Yeah, better. I mean, I mean, I was like, oh. I go, don't worry, we're doing another game. Do another game. No, try to get him going. Don't worry, we'll get you in there real fast. Relax. Cartwright got out almost every time first. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you didn't even move. He's too busy doing this. Yeah. That's why. Okay, have a seat for a second, see where you're at. Okay. Well, I make you do exercises for some reasons, but there's always a good reason for some of the exercises. Does that make sense? I mean, I just don't make you do every exercise for physical fitness. There's actually reasons for like drills. Okay? You guys got any idea why we do a push up really? Any idea for self defense wise? So we're pushing somebody off you, sure. So, here's your move. We didn't do it today, but here's one of them. Sit like a push-up. Right? There it is. Pushing that guy off you. Bring your knee in. Buck up, shrimp out the end, okay? So, leg pushes. 
these are good exercise. All these are good exercises for fitness, but why do you think we really do it for self-defense? Somebody off you or kicking. If you have to try to get up, they're coming at you, kick. Double kick. But you're practicing a heel kick every time. You don't even know you're doing it. Isn't that what's sneaky about self defense or training? Why do we do it? Reason for everything. Okay? Um, squat, thrust, jump kick, I'm teaching you how to kick. That's why. For kicking, but again, there is a lot of physical fitness in that, okay? Uh, mountain climbers, mainly conditioning, but again, if you look at a mountain climber, your leg comes up like this, you're doing what? Knee strike. Remember, 45, roll over, come up, knee strike, right? Just like your mountain climbers, over and over. So you start looking at stuff a little differently when you do exercise. So you're doing workouts, you're going, oh, it hates us. Yeah, I'm killing you some, but you're learning stuff. It's called the Miyagi concept. Want to have fun with it? Miyagi made him stand the deck. Miyagi made him wax the car. Or paint the fence, right? <laughs> but all that was skills they were doing over and over and over until they showed them. Same thing here. So that's why a lot of times when I do something, I like show you guys like a cotton, like, hey, that's a self-defense move in that cotton. Hey, that's a throw. Because that way you can see that what you're doing is just not trying to look good. But there's a reason. Uh, the new guy is not here tonight, but he asked, um, why don't we pull our hands in? I said, because it looks good. He goes, okay. I go, no, I'm joking. He took it. You know, I was like, that's nice. I said, it's for self-defense. Well, what do you mean? I go, well, if you came up behind me and tried to grab me and I do an elbow strike, I want my elbow to go back to the solar plexus in your body. If I stop my hand here, am I hitting anybody behind me? No. If I'm here, am I hitting anybody? If I'm up here, am I hitting anybody? No. Here, pushing it back. That's why we drive it back. That's an elbow strike. Every time somebody comes up behind you, starts to grab you, bam. Or you do your high block, they're trying to grab you, you're pushing the hands off of his body, and you're jamming that elbow back. Does that make sense? So these are things why we do them. It's just not because it looks cool. There's reasons for it, okay? Now, there are some things that in life that are just what they are. Does that make sense? Punch is a punch. Kick is a kick. Okay? All right, so let's do a little self-defense stand-up. The one that I'm going to talk about, one more thing before I actually just have self-defense related technique. Uh, Fudadashi, like this. Okay? This motion. Guy comes up and grabs you from the front, locks your arms, like bear hug from the front. There you go, right on his knee. That motion. You come down onto his knee. So same same thing as you normally do, like here, right here. This motion. You come up, come down on his knee. Make sense? So instead of kicking your leg, you're gonna kick his knee. Does that make sense? So that's one reason we do it. That's the self defense reason. Well, because, hey, man, this looks cool. Let's do this. <laughs> That's the reason for it. All right. Um, I talked to another martial artist. I don't who he is. Not from our school. And um, they were talking, and they said, man, I wish I would have learned why we do all this stuff. I said, why didn't you ask when you were training? Well, I did once, and I got a weird answer. So I'm going to clear my head and take a walk. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And I said, well, if you asked and you got a weird answer, you should just ask them why that was bad. Does that make sense? You know, like, new guy again. Trying to show him how to do, hey, it's Monday, trying to show him how to do an arm bar. So forth. Why you put your hand? He said, well, I'll just get out of it. Why do you have your leg up? I'll just roll out. And when I did it to him, he was like, oh, wow. That's a lot different than I thought it was. And I rolled him sideways, turned sideways to him like that. I did leg up pushing his face down, and then he goes, oh, this makes sense now. So when you see it, it makes sense, okay? So obviously we're going to do a little self-defense without a partner today. So we're going to go front choke like this. We're going to take both hands up like this and grab. That's what they're doing to you, choke, okay? Grab, pluck off, knee, and elbow. Could be an upward elbow, could be a downward elbow, depending how they fall, does that make sense? If you're having a groin and they're way down like this, yeah, sure, you can come downward if you wanted to. You know, 
want their heads up a little bit more, you can help them up, help assist them. You know? It's all about helping your fellow attacker. And the attacks you, you help them. Okay, you know, so, yes. one, of, one of the things I think about in this, say like with self-defense and everything, mm -hmm. you know, when you say, okay, I want you to do more, I do it. And now I start to think, okay, if I were out in real life, would I do that, you know, without even thinking? I mean, oh, that move right there, this. that move, you mean, right there? That, any, oh, any of them. Yeah. Uh, some of them, you may start exactly the way we show you. Um, not saying everyone, but high statistic on that particular move. Whenever you feel pain, you react to pain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I took your hand, put it in that door, and slammed it, guess what you grab? Your hand. You feel pain. Why? It's proven. I remember doing dumb things when I was a kid. Touch the hot bulb on the tree. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. You guys do. Grab the hot bulb when I was a kid. Ah, I let go. Grab my hand that was in pain. Slam my hand in the car door. Then open the door and grab my hand. Then somebody said, hey, dummy, open the door. Okay. <laughs> right? But I grabbed my hand that was in pain instead of opening the door. You feel pain, you react to it. High percentage of people, when you feel pain, you react to it. So that particular move right there, if someone's choking your throat, you're going to feel pain on your throat. You're going to grab that. You're going to grab that. Try to pull it off. That's what you're going to do. Right. All the rest is really up to you. It could be a knee. It could be a kick. It could be an elbow. It could be a palm heel. The goal of having certain moves in your counterattack is that if you do them enough times, that'll be your natural instinct. Does that make sense? Yeah, so once you get up there, it'll kind of take over. That's what we hope. Yeah. We hope that we get enough repetition into your head that what it is. Just, that's what it is. Um, I don't know if I ever told you guys, I, I told somebody in one of the classes. To this day, sometimes when I'm doing things with my friends or different people and I want them to stop, I yell Monte. Because I've said it so many times. Which means stop. I don't tell them stop. I yell Monte. Monte! Why aren't you stopping for me? <laughs> you know, it's because the Japanese word is so ingrained in my head, that means stop. So whenever I try to stop somebody, I have to tell myself to say it in English. So I'm going to say it in Japanese, so I'm so used to saying it in Japanese. That word, that particular word of all words, for some reason is so ingrained in there, that to me is English. Does that make sense? That one word of all the words, <laughs> that's crazy. So there's repetition for you. I ingrained that in so much to this day. Instead of telling someone to stop, I will yomate, then have to register in my head, say it in English, because they have no idea what I'm talking about. Isn't that weird? I don't know why. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's been ingrained. So that's what we hope to do with repetition. The more times you punch, the more times you do a technique that you just, there it is. Same thing with that. You know, eventually it'll just boom. Um, I've seen my students actually apply some of this stuff. Uh, you guys probably don't know him. Uh, Sensei Hazleton, he passed away a while back. He, um, he was out at a club. I came up and grabbed him from behind. He went, bam! That elbow was instant, like that, no thought. And then he threw the dude. I was like, what? Please. I was like, that poor guy's laying on the floor. And I'm like, don't kill him! I had to say it. Because I know what he's going to do next, punch and then a stomping kick. And I'm like, he's going to kill this guy. But it was really cool because he just, he just instinct and bam! <laughs> and I knew it was coming back. Punch and a kick, you know? But I was like, it was so instinctive. And that's because of repetition. Because there was no time to talk. The guy just grabbed him. It was just, as soon as you grabbed him, bam, it was, then the guy was on the floor. And you're like, nice. Instinctive. And again, that's based on repetition. So this does its thing. Like, when you spar, when you guys spar, you're not supposed to think. You're supposed to feel and react. Does that make sense? In the beginning, you think because you don't know what to do. Grappling, same thing. You're grappling somebody in class. What do I do? It's not what you do. You gotta say, okay, what moves have I learned? Do I see that move happening? What is the counter? And that all has to be processed extremely fast. And that comes from what? Reps. Okay? So that again, and that's why we're always made if you put your hand here on the punches. That way you got one mean elbow strike. That makes sense? So it's something, you know, I want, you know, and someone says, well, how am I know it's going to hit somebody? Have somebody come up 
behind you and grab me and pull your hand back. You will hit them. That's the black to do the stomach, guaranteed. You're not going to hit them in the face. You can't bring your hands up here when they grab up here. You can bring your hands low. They're not going to drag down this low usually. And they do that to hold up. So, repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, everybody's different. Some people things register 10,000. Do it 10,000 times. Sounds a lot. No. Really, it yeah, sounds a lot. No. Some people with 10,000. Those are the lucky ones. Right. You can get it after 10,000 starts becoming this, you're lucky. Most people, a lot higher. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Some could be 20, 30, 50, 100,000 before it registered. Literally just registered like that. Um, what happens is by the time you become a black belt, you start becoming edgy when you get your black belt. Everything is like you feel like someone's going to attack you all the time. So you kind of, after you do very good full speed, you'll understand why. Yeah. Because you're like totally edgy. <laughs> because they're making fun at you. Or you guys have done very good together when you've had that before. You know, we couldn't have people. You know how we got people in the middle and you see a black belt reacting? That's because they've done it so many times. You know, and, and you'll get there too. Just the point is, you need to rest. The more reps you do on the movement, the more you'll start saying a lot of things better. Okay. Alright, so next one. They grab on the shoulder from behind, hand comes up, spin around, squeeze, strike the nose, knee to the groin. Okay. Do it again. Spin around, either side, right or left. Squeeze, strike, groin. Do you technically have to do the hand first? No. So you can go to a knee first. Okay, instead of doing the palm heel strike, you could come around. If you grab those arms, they start stepping, you're going to want to do the knee first. Because they're dragging you. Does that make sense? You want to do that knee first. So, I'm giving you like this piece of the pie, and then you get to pick what you want to put on at the top of this. Right? That makes third ice cream. Sundays are better, you have to put a lot more toppings. You've got honey or going. Yeah. Or frozen yogurt, you get to put all the toppings on, and just got to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so the next one, the guy grabs right here and shoves you backwards. So let's think of these step backwards. And of course, if you feel off balance, you can bring your hand down and catch your balance. Then this is your freebie. Make sense? So when someone pushes you, you're going to step backwards naturally. And this is to catch your balance. You're going to put your hand on their arms. Why? Because it, it helps your balance. And then the bonus is if you push it on the arms and their face goes forward, it makes that elbow a lot easier to do. Does that make sense? I right, try that a couple times, guys. There you go. All right, good, good. Now, I'm going to really confuse you now. You said, how would you react? I don't know if I react like that. When you become a black belt, that's the answer. I'm like, oh, yeah. Because you're going to find out that all these things can interchange. The worst thing is when a black belt starts making up a kata that he's not supposed to be making. That's my kata, okay? For instance, he has, let's do this really simple. You all know what I'm talking about. Ajumente. And all of a sudden, they start he starts changing Ajumente. Because he can make anything work. That's what's really neat. Once you start getting all these arsenal weapons on yourself, all the different weapons, you can make almost any move work. Does that make sense? So if I step back and I press down, why do I got to do it all? Maybe I have a blast will fall here. I step back and press down, maybe I go kick. I don't know. I step back and press down. Maybe I give him a hook punch. I don't know. Where do you want to go with this? Maybe I step back and I chop him in the freaking neck or throw. I don't know. Maybe I step back and poke him in the eyes. I don't know. You see what I mean? You have so many weapons that you don't realize that eventually that'll what will come out. You know? And you'll see a lot in self-defense. But I never saw that move before. Wait, you just made it up. I show them an idea and then they run with it. Does that make sense? Because you're gonna do what you feel good with. Does that make sense? You think you're gonna go the strongest move, your strongest move, your strongest strength? Yep, that's what you'll do. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Even if I'm telling you over and over the best way to strike is with an open hand, if you don't break your hand, doesn't mean you will do it. You might punch him. 
why would you write punches? Make sense? You might like a rich hand. You might end up doing that to someone. You might have something you like, and that's what you're going to do. And you might step back, press down, and you might come right to the temple with that rich hand. Boom! Bam! Right to his temple. Bam! Why? Because that's what you like. That's what's me. I'm giving you the setup of it, and eventually you'll change. My goal is I hope they count it in you enough so that you remember it. You don't go, oh, that guy's grabbing me, pushed me back, what do I do? Well, well, by that time, he's hit you with three on the floor. Make sense? Reaction has to be quick. Once it's quick, it doesn't matter what that reaction was. Sounds weird, doesn't it? By you reacting, um, an attacker doesn't like people to fight back. An attacker wants fight to be simple. They don't want you to fight back. Why? I don't know. They don't want to get hit. They don't want to get hurt. So by you reacting, it throws them off. I've told people this sounds really crazy. Let's say if Nick has a knife, I may attack him with that knife. No, no, not me with that. Excuse me. Stand up. Nick has a knife. I may attack him before he attacks me. Why? Never expect it. It sounds crazy. But if I know he's planning on killing me that, Nick says the magic words, I think that's me too. I'm going to blank, 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 kill you. You know what I'm saying? The magic words. Um, I'm probably going to attack Nick. Why? Because he's already told me he's going to kill me. Now, why do I want Nick to get a full, like Nick's got a knife in his hand, why do I want him to get a full stroke, very powerful cut? Why do I want, want him to do that? He's going to be yeah, I want, to make, I want to attack him before he gets his whole power. You want to get inside the knife. Yeah, I want, to, I, want, I want to blitz him somehow. You know, let's say he has a knife down, you know, I might, I might be coming like, boom. I might try to block that knife and strike him the whole time. Why? You never expect to do it. Most people expect, okay, all right, all right. All right, don't cut me. You know, you know, you know that's what they expect. So I, if I know I'm going to get, I have no choice for the, the conflict, I may attack him on purpose. Totally whacked out. He'll never expect it. Never. Because they don't think that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. They think you're scared. And, and don't get me wrong. I will be scared. And which was actually good because I'm going to hit harder. <laughs> when you're scared, you actually do things harder. You're stronger. You're faster. You don't even realize it. You know? Like, oh. You just can't say the magic word, I'm going to die. Because you already lost. Does that make sense? Anything you do, sports, life, anything, college, whatever you guys are doing, you can't go into it and say, I'm going to fail. Because you are going to fail. Does that make sense? You have to believe in yourself. You've got to have that confidence say, this is going to work. If you say, it's not going to work, it is not going to work. When I break boards, I don't go, man, this is going to, this is not going to break. So why are you breaking it? As soon as you say that, it's over. You're probably not going to do it. Make sense. So same thing with self defense. You have to believe what you're doing is going to work. You can never doubt it. Once you doubt it, that one split second, you're stabbed, you're punched in the face, you're thrown on the ground. You know, you got to say this stuff works, and I am upset they're attacking. And there's lots of things that go into favor, but you see where I'm going with this. You have to believe it works. I mean, you didn't go and take your first job ever with an interview and going, well, I'm not going to get it this. You probably weren't going to get it. You had to go in and sell yourself enough to believe that you were going to get that job. And you hoped, but again, you went with the idea that you wanted that job. And if they felt that, you probably got a job. Does that make sense? I mean, I never got hired at a fast food restaurant. Never. It was not hiring. I didn't really want the job. I'm not lying. I didn't really want to work at McDonald's and Burger King. I did not want to work there. I wanted just to make money. And they could tell. I got a job in some place else that I wanted to work there. But they could tell. I think they could sense that. That I didn't really want. I wanted the money, but they didn't, I didn't want to really do the job. I, I could tell. I mean, I think they could tell, too. Sorry, I'm rambling. But this is how self-defense works, why we do repetitions, how we will register eventually down the road. Um, I like that confidence factor, though, because, you know, we don't spar a whole
whole time and stuff like that, and all of a sudden you get in a confrontation. But anyway, you're in the heat of the confrontation. Yeah. You know, you don't have time to really sit there and think it all out, you know, like you're doing like a math test or no. you're doing a finance test, you know. You're right into it. Right away, it's like you against them, it's one on one yeah. reaction. Got to react. And now, now, here's a big thing, too. Sometimes in self defense, reaction is not always physical. Does that make sense? That, I don't want to misconceive. So, hey, all we need to attack every time. A lot of times, mind plans are incredibly powerful. A mind plan is just throwing a distraction verbally at somebody to get them to do a reaction. Uh, I always tell this to my college students, money, and the first thing I say is, I don't have this before I say it, because I'm going to say something weird. That comes up to a stall, and hey, I don't want to fight, I got AIDS, and I, I, I want you to realize that. That person has to think now for two seconds. What did he say? He said he had AIDS, right? So in that process, it gives me a chance to run, or counterattack extremely fast. Because he's busy processing what I said. Does that make sense? I do. So you, you got to think it's not always physical. Sometimes it's mental. Mind plan. It's used in marketing all the time. They call it bait and switch. But as long as they have something there while they're doing this, they can get away with it. Walmart's notorious for it. So the godfather is a bait and switch. They don't call it that because they can't. So that's illegal. But they use it as a mind plan. They send you that great flyer, 72 inch TV. Beautiful, man. $299. Full ready, high definition. Bam. $299. You get that. There it is. Uh, sir, we sold all out. You should be looking at that 75 inch right now. That's on sale for 399. That's even better. Look how much bigger that is. That three inches is incredibly big. Do you not see the difference? Look at the color. Three inches long. And they plug it into the worst receptions of that color on that 17 and most of it. It's a strategy. It's all to do with marketing, okay? You know, it's how people sell things. They do it all the time, you know? They help guide you what they want to sell. Does that make sense? They do it all the time. So that's a mind plan. Just to give you an idea how it's used in the real world, not just karate. Okay? Uh, sorry, I gapped a long time. Made an easy class, didn't I? I'm good at this. <laughs> Good day, I'm a lecturer, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Questions, comments, guys? What is this? Sorry. But a lot of this stuff is good, though. This is really good stuff to understand for self-defense and why we do things and the repetition. Hopefully, you guys are 10,000. If you're over 10,000, you have to work hard. <laughs> but you don't know that until you do about 10,000. All right, Chief. Great. Kudashi? No, so much to get to any questions. All right, good stretches. See you down. Thank you, sir. Purple, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Orange, see you. I'll give you a ranking promotion. <laughs> I don't know why I say that on occasion. <laughs>